The rest of our summer 2022 adventures continue, and this is really going to be a coast-to-coast -coast road trip. Destination, the Pacific. We begin with a five-day drive from Miami, Florida to Colorado, from where we're going to explore the Rocky Mountains and beyond. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. The story begins like so many others on a warm Friday morning in August at home base in Miami, Florida on I-95 North. This will be the first trip with Starship, the new Silverado trail bus. We're gonna take the turnpike up the Florida spine, tedious but still the quickest and most efficient way in and out of the peninsula. Oh no, that is definitely a bad day. Well, here we are, first stop, the Port St. Lucie Fort Pierce uh, Service Plaza, about two hours into the, into the la drive. Uh, breakfast is going to be some leftover chicken strips from Publix and um, yeah, I really wasn't planning on doing this uh, part of the trip solo, but, um, but that's the way it's going to have to be. Uh, I was going to do this part of the trip with mom, but she hasn't been feeling so well. Eventually, mom got better, but not soon enough to join me on this trip. After a quick overnight at Pelicamp, our North Florida retreat, we cross into Georgia. Do you know what they have near Macon, Georgia? Buckies! 3.17 per gallon at Buckies. Let's get ourselves some breakfast. Okay. okay, so I got myself, oh by the way, they do have tater tots, but this one, mmm. I got myself a sliced brisket sandwich for later, and for now, the breakfast uh, sausage egg and cheese biscuit. So, let me begin, and the journey continues after this. Now crossing Atlanta. And this first leg of the trip is going to be mostly non-stop. I have a reservation, so I have to be there in four days, but I love these long trips. Driving cross-country, you experience the gradual and sometimes not so gradual change of scenery. For example, after the almost featureless topography of Florida and southern Georgia, it is very refreshing to see the mountains of Appalachia again. 305 gas. Now it's really prices are really coming down. We're at the at the Calhoun uh, Bucky's. Now let me see how I can get out of here. Now crossing Chattanooga, Lookout Mountain, the Tennessee River. What a great city! Crossing the Tennessee River. And we're gonna stop at the Welcome Center. And that is the Marion County Park campground. Very nice. I'm a little bit tired at this point. I've been almost 10 hours on the road. By the way, this is one of the nicer, uh, nicest uh, um, rest areas uh, here. As, uh, it's, it's the Tennessee Welcome Center. And you know, it's the Welcome Center, you know, after, after you pass Chattanooga, you dip back into Georgia for a little bit and then come back into Tennessee and it's on an island on the Tennessee River and uh, it's very nice. Let's, let's just walk down there, you know, stretch our legs. We have an, about an hour and a half uh, to go before we get to, to East Nashville, which is where we're staying today. Yeah, let's walk down to the river. Oh, here we go. Here we are, the Tennessee River. This is kind of like a, like a reservoir here, but uh, it's a beautiful view. And somewhere down yonder, that is that uh, Marion County Park where we stayed once. All right, Nashville awaits. Over the next few miles, we're going to climb to the top of the Cumberland Plateau, a stretch of road locally known as Monteagle Mountain. It is a long, steep ascent, particularly challenging for semi-trucks and underpowered vehicles. 
Ask me how I know. The descent is also very dangerous for trucks. What can I say? Starship is a beast. It didn't even feel Montego. It, 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 it didn't even have to downshift much. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it is great. It is now the next day and we're driving across the Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, and its unmistakable skyline. We get some traffic crossing into Kentucky. And one last time crossing the Tennessee River. And then the Ohio River into the land of Lincoln. We're getting close. We're about to cross the Mississippi. And there it is. The silhouette of the Gateway Arch is a sign we're approaching St. Louis. After crossing the mighty Mississippi, we are now in Missouri. Also crossing the Missouri River, which we're going to cross a couple more times, driving to the west. Like now. We're going to spend the night at a casino parking lot. Right here, to be exact. And I am in the mood for a steak. It's a brand new day and today we're crossing Kansas City. We are now in the heart of America. For real, we are almost halfway across the continent right now. And we're now in Kansas. We're going to spend the night at a KOA in western Kansas, and then tomorrow we're going to Colorado. Well, good morning. I think this was pretty much the definition of hightailing it, right? What was it? Four days ago we were in South Florida, and now we're in western Kansas. I mean, it's been go, 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 but uh, we, we've made good time, actually. Uh, we're in Goodland, Kansas, just a few miles away from the Colorado border, and this is pretty much where the where the journey begins, really, our Colorado uh, journey here. By the way, beautiful. This is not part of it, but this is what's behind our water and electric sites. Very nice. This is uh, the, the Goodland KOA. I only got water and electric, and I'm only using electric, really, because uh, that's all I really need for a quick overnight here. We're going to depart in about half an hour, uh, which, by the way, the trail bus, Starship here, has been a great uh, towing machine for this uh, leg of the trip. I mean, it has been like the first trip we've used uh, the new Silverado, and uh, this 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 thing is made for the open road, man. It uh, it performed great. It's very comfortable on, on long drives, so I'm happy with it. All right, let me let me finish packing up. I'm gonna see if I can put the three cameras, even though it's gonna be raining on and off, and we may not get the best views of the mountains, but. Still, you know, we're going into Colorado, so... I was really hoping to be able to see the Rockies coming into view over the horizon, but with this weather, it is not going to happen. And we are now in colorful Colorado! Let's stop at the Welcome Center real quick to take a picture with the sign. Well, here we are. I decided to stop at the Colorado Visitor Center to take a picture with the Colorado sign. And here we are. Welcome to Colorful Colorado. Here we have a McDonald's. Mm, Chester's, which is not the best, but not the worst either. And most importantly, gasoline, so let's fill up both the tank and my stomach. Sometimes it is a little challenging finding a suitable pump. Mm, busy truck stop. 
This is not really a parking space, but I'm not blocking anybody and I'll try to be quick. I decided to go for Chester's. Haven't had that in a while. I'm kind of illegally parked here. Let me see if I can. If I can get on an actual spot. <laughs> Well, here we go. I doubt it is gonna be healthy, but that my, what my body wants right now. Not all of it, though. Probably I'll have half. Well, now that I filled up my tank at $3.99 and I filled up my belly with probably too much fried chicken, uh, we, got, we have two hours and 20 minutes to go. The weather seems to be getting worse. I, mean, I gotta be honest, I'm kind of disappointed. I was really looking forward to getting those first views of the Rockies we should be seeing right in front of us. There's nothing. We've made it to Denver and there is traffic. Approaching the Rockies. I'm so excited. Here's the Mount Evans exit at Idaho Springs. Mount Evans is the highest paved road in the United States, and we drove it back in 2014, and we'll drive it again one of these days when we get a chance. Right now, I'm on a mission. And here, I'm going to take US 40 West towards Granby. going up and up in elevation. I'm kind of glad we're in mid-August here and there isn't really any chance of snow. We've got switchbacks and hairpin turns. It is getting interesting. The rooftop camera has been glitching and I think it is going to die at any moment. It must be the humidity or the changing temperature or maybe the high elevation. Who knows? GoPros work in mysterious ways sometimes. Anyway, we've reached the top, so let's take a break. Well, all of a sudden, a little bit chilly here in Colorado. And uh, let me just show you the sign of where we are. We are at the Berthoud, I guess that's how you pronounce it, Berthoud Pass. Elevation 11,307 feet above sea level. And uh, yeah, I'm a little short of breath, believe it or not. Um, still raining. I mean, we're in, kind of in, inside the clouds here, but um, but yeah, we made it to to the Continental Divide here. Elevation 11,307 uh, 11, feet above sea level. Well, it figures all the rooftop cameras died and to make a long story short, eventually I arrived at Sun Outdoors Rocky Mountains for my sponsored stay. And that's one of the reasons for my rush getting here. As of summer 2022, I'm working with Sun Outdoors showcasing some of their resorts and this is one of three we're going to be staying at over the next few weeks. And you probably watched those videos months ago, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the resort. Suffice to say, it is fabulous. 
Oh, what a fabulous place this is. And uh, you probably saw this as part of my Sun Outdoors collaboration. Uh, but we just arrived here, we just unhedged. And uh, it's, it's a shame we have such a crummy weather because take a look at this uh, site. I mean, we've been, we have a refrigerator, uh, we have a grill, and uh, ooh, we got some, some water on the lens there at this nice table. They even gave me a compliment, complimentary firewood. <laughs> So um, here we are, this is uh, Sun Outdoors Rocky Mountains and uh, today I think I'm just going to spend the rest of the day uh, working and then tomorrow we'll go explore. It looks like it is going to be a beautiful day in the Rocky Mountains. I'm going to grill some steaks for lunch, and then we're going to explore. Here we have Lake Granby and Shadow Mountain Lake a little farther up ahead. Beautiful out here. After a brief visit to the visitor center, it is time to enter the park. And this is the thing, as of summer 2022, Rocky Mountain National Park has a reservation system, so unless you arrive at the park before 9 a.m., you have to have a reservation and you have to enter the park within a certain time window. Mm, hold that thought, I think we have some wildlife here. Yep, I see a moose, let's park. It's always a good day when you get to see wildlife, especially moose. Oh, there's another one over there. Apparently, it is fairly common to see moose here in the park, especially when you're close to a body of water. And there is more wildlife here. Is that an elk? I believe that's an elk. About that time, the entry system I was talking about, you also need a reservation to visit Bear Lake, which is the most popular part of the park. I managed to secure a reservation for Bear Lake for tomorrow. And what I'm going to do is show up at the park really early, before 9 a.m. That way I have the whole morning to explore and then do Bear Lake. So today we're just gonna get the lay of the land and go to the highest point. Speaking of which, we've been going up in elevation, so let's take a break. And I almost forgot I don't have the trailer behind, so I can park at a regular space. Always save the oversized parking for the RVs. This is called Far View Curve Viewpoint, and you can certainly see far. We can even see Timber Creek Campground. There are so many hiking trails and so many lakes in this park, it is, it is insane, actually. Now approaching Milner Pass, the Continental Divide. But we're not gonna stop. Elevation here, by the way, 10,759 feet. That would be 3,279 meters. Now going above the tree line. Let's see 
how high we can go. And we've made it to the Alpine Visitor Center as we approach the highest point on Trail Ridge Road here. Let's stop and take a break and maybe a hike. Well, here we are. 11,796 uh, feet above sea level. And uh, let me tell you, the, the lack of oxygen is palpable. Um, all right, let's try to go all the way to the top. I know I'm gonna be huffing and puffing halfway there, but I think the views are gonna be worth it. I'm glad I went back and got my sweater because it's getting significantly colder. Oh man, what a beautiful, it's gonna be beautiful from up there. It is actually a lot farther than it looks, but we'll make it. Yeah, that view is quite amazing. It takes your breath away. Well, yeah, it's the elevation. <laughs> Just uh, five days ago, I was at sea level. And now here we are at 12, over 12,000 feet of elevation. In the tundra up here, we've almost conquered the summit here and now there's hardly anybody here it's I guess it's getting late oh. Oh, we gotta come back in winter <laughs> I told it was gonna be huffing and puffing oh there's more Well, here we are, commanding views of the Alpine Ridge behind me. It's really cold. left me alone at the top. Cowards, come back! It is getting late. So I bought one of these uh, oxygen canisters, you know, because I'm feeling, I'm feeling the altitude. You know, I'm still, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm still well, but a little short of breath, a little bit of a headache, so. A little bit of pure oxygen, you know, helps. <laughs> Let's go a little higher and a little deeper into the park. What a great view of Long Peak from here. The summit over 14,000 feet above sea level. We're going to continue a few more miles up to the highest point on this road, which is somewhere around here. I think that was it. 
we begin the descent onto Estes Park on the other side of Rocky Mountains. I'm going to turn around as soon as I get a chance because it is getting kind of late. I've decided to return. I don't want um, I don't. I don't want to get caught in the dark here at the, the, in the in the national park. That's it for today. Tomorrow we'll get up early so we can explore more. Well, good morning. Today we're going back to the Rocky Mountain National Park. I keep trying to call it Glacier National Park for some odd reason. But uh, that's what we're doing today. Is my refrigerator on? Yes, it is. I got plenty of water. I don't have much of food, but we'll survive. Let me make sure I lock the door. I did, indeed. We, we do have a 2 p.m. pass to go all the way to the end of the park to Bear Lake. I don't know if we're gonna do that yet or not. Because um, I wanna enter the park now before 9 a.m. So we can get, uh, so, we, so we don't need a pass. Otherwise I would have to wait until 2 p.m to get inside the park. I just love how the mountains shine in the morning light. I got into the park, no problems, and now I have until 2 p.m. to get to Bear Lake. Let's go for a little bit of a hike here to start our day. Um, actually, this is more uh, in the in the in the pamphlet. This is what they call a stroll because it's a very short hike. Yeah, they call the easy hikes strolls because um, I guess you know it's packed gravel. Is you know I don't tell anybody. I forgot to bring my hiking shoes. <laughs> I don't know why am I not surprised? Why are you not surprised? <laughs> But uh, we're gonna go all the way to the Colorado River, which is right here, and uh, it's like like just a mile, you know, going around the the Colorado River and whatnot. I might not even do the whole thing. I just want to stretch my legs. Uh, I'm not in any hurry today, so we're gonna do like the easy hikes. That would be the mighty Colorado. Such a wonderful stroll here in the morning. Uh, what a great way to start our day here at, at Rocky Mountain National Park. You know, the views from the trail are fantastic. Glacial Valley. Hmm. I believe this to be the end of the trail, so.
I know, we were here yesterday, but what can I say? Better light? This is the Lake Irene picnic area and I believe you have a view of Lake Irene right here coming up. Actually there is a short trail to Lake Irene here. So it doesn't, doesn't have a trailhead or doesn't say how, how long it is but this is it. It's a very good thing about coming to the park this early. So peaceful. There it is, Lake Irene. Let's go back. Once again, going above the tree line. Let's stop here real quick. This is the spot where we reach tundra climate. We're above the tree line here. And uh, it is a commanding view, if I may say so myself. Look at that. Spectacular. Just spectacular. I just kind of wish it was a little earlier in the season so there would be a little more snow on the mountains. But hey, I'll take it. This time we're not gonna stop at the Alpine Visitor Center. We're just gonna keep going. We'll return here, but we're going to use a different route. Oh, what a view. This is called Gore Range Overlook. And that would be, again, Long's Peak off in the distance. This one is called the Lava Cliffs Overlook. This is the Tundra Communities Trailhead, so here we're going to park, use the facilities, and go on another short hike. Well, here's another commanding view, if, I, if you will. <laughs> and uh, there's even a lake, there's even a lake we can see over there. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna go up for a little hike. Here we go, half a mile one way, and it is paved.
Check it out. Wildlife. Wildlife with a view. It keeps going that way, but there seems to be a viewpoint here, so let's check it out. Look at these rocks. That's wild. That was worth that was worth the hike. And we still have another one coming up. A little farther. Let's do the whole half mile, right? They are called mushroom rocks. And that's where we're going next. We've made it to the summit. Let's see if we can make it all the way up. I made it to use both hands for this one. <laughs> Here we are. It's a big reveal. Oh. Yeah, I'd say that was worth the climb up here. What did you say? I'm, a little, I'm getting a little bit of vertigo here, believe it or not. <laughs> it's not that bad, I'm just being dramatic. All right, what goes up, let's go down. There it is, Starship. This one is called Forest Canyon Overlook. Let's check it out. I guess that's why it is called Forest Canyon. I believe this is called Rainbow Curve Overlook, but we're not gonna stop right now. This one is the Many Parks Curve Overlook, and the reason why I'm not stopping at any of these is because we're coming back this way. Now we're going to take Fall River Road, which is a narrow one-way dirt road that actually goes back to the Alpine Visitor Center.
It is a paved, very easy trail, although there is one steep incline. Oh, what a view! And that's our waterfall! And it looks like someone is making a painting. Very cool. It would be even cooler to see the process and the final product. That's the lower parking lot. That was a short, very rewarding little hike. It's a little steep though. This is where the pavement ends. Fall River Road, here we come! Well, this is the reason why we bought a truck, right? To get on some dirt roads. I mean, this one is pretty well maintained. But... Uh, yeah. Chasm Falls coming up. Let's stop. Hmm. Look at that granite wall. That's amazing. I'm still not used to the turning radius or lack thereof on Starship. Wildlife, perhaps? This is Chapin Creek Trailhead and this is where I was gonna come and do this trail. But as you can see, it's Ah, there's no parking if I really wanted to, but I decided not to do it. This uh, you've arrived. Thank you. This uh, road was adventure enough, and uh, I'm just gonna go by the Alpine Visitor Center, get something to eat, and then we, we gotta make a beeline for for uh, Bear Lake because it's 1:04 p.m. already, and my my reservation is for two. Well, I have a window from two to four, so. The truth is, I'm tired, and I'm hungry, 
So let's just stop at the Alpine Visitor Center. They have a gift shop, presumably food, and then what is sure to be the pièce de résistance. All right, 10.50 for a ham sandwich, but hey, considering where we are, over 11,000 feet. GPS signal lost. I'm starting. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Now let's go to Bear Lake. Here we are, we've made it to the checkpoint. Even though all the signs say parking lot full, I'm still going to try my luck and go all the way. If anything, for the views on the way up. I think they are going to be worth it. And if I can't find anything, I can always come back to the park and ride. parking lot is indeed full, so let's turn around and take the shuttle. By the way, if you have a large vehicle like a camper van or a Class C over 21 feet long, you have to use the park and ride anyway. I just prefer to drive myself whenever possible, but not this time. Our shuttle is here. Maybe we'll get some nice lateral views now. There are several stops along the way, most of them pretty crowded. Lots of very popular trailheads along this route. This is my first time here, so this is mostly like an overview, but I would love to come back and do some of the more popular hikes. gonna go to Bear Lake and the hike around the lake is supposed to be like half a mile which is not bad you know at this point in the day I'm not in the mood for like a very long or strenuous hike now the question is shall we go clockwise or counterclockwise oh yeah I can see the appeal this place is beautiful Yeah, Bear Lake, yeah, very impressed. I think it was worth, uh, you know, waiting the whole day, getting that uh, uh, entrance permit just to be able to see this. It's a very busy, as you probably have noticed. Uh, they were not kidding when they said it was a heavily trafficked uh, trail, but 
yeah, it should be half, an, uh, half a mile to go all around, all around the lakes. That's what I'm gonna do. Everywhere you look, you know, it's like it's impossible to take a bad, bad picture. And it's almost the same thing, but from from a slightly different angle, and it's just amazing. Can you take a picture? Yeah, that's the Instagram rock right there. The Instagram rock. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Chipmunk. Oop. And I think that's it for Bear Lake. We might come back one of these days, but what is the I think we're going back to the campground. And here's the shuttle. Well, it's leaving. I guess we'll get on the next one. Taking the shuttle back is a little bit of an ordeal. There are so many people waiting at all the different stops that several shuttles left almost empty. But eventually, now we are on our way. We still have to drive all the way back, and it's been a long day, but let me tell you, totally worth it. Okay, this is the Many Parks Overlook we decided to skip earlier. Let's park and see what it is all about. There seem to be some pretty expansive views. Oh yeah, that's going to be quite the view. Well, I had almost forgotten I wanted to stop at this uh, Vista Point here. And this is gonna be the last stop. I mean, unless I have to stop like to go to the bathroom. This is gonna be the last stop in, in Rocky Mountains National Park here. This is called the Many Parks uh, Vista Point or something like that, so. Thank you. This is it. Yeah, I, I, I guess it refers to all the other beautiful things that there are beyond uh, the national park, the other parks, if you will. All right, well, tomorrow we have to go back to Denver to pick up a package and then we'll see. We don't really have a plan. Well, I kind of lied because we're going to make one final stop here at the Rainbow Curve we also skipped this one earlier.
wildlife crossing here? Are those elk? Yes, hello Mr. Elk, or Mrs. Elk, actually. For such a massive creature, there's a certain elegance to their gait. Like she's walking on high heels or something. Hello there, happy family. Well, let me tell you, it's been a long day, it's been a fun day, it's been a fun couple of days here at Sun Outdoors Rocky Mountains, and what better way to end the day than by the campfire with friends. And this was not planned. <laughs> the day before yesterday, I'm walking by the bar, and I see this Tom and Stacy, <laughs> RV, Texas, y'all. Yeah, uh, guys. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna do a quick, you know, YouTubers, what, what do you what do YouTubers do when they meet each other? We take video of each other. <laughs> <laughs> so they have this uh, thing is called Winging It on their channel. Every Texas, y'all check it out, and uh, they interview fellow RVers, fellow travelers, right? Yes. And um, can yep. you tell us a little more about your channel, just since uh, I have you here on the spot? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we are on the spot. We went we went full time in 2018, and. Uh, We've been following Robert since who knows how long. I mean, way back in the day. And this, this is a privilege for us. I mean, we, we love just bringing the RV lifestyle uh, to you guys. And um, honey? Well, we're all about experiencing life, not just living it. And that's yeah, what yep. we try to share, mm -hmm. share on our channel. So. Yeah. Thanks, Let me Robert. tell you, it's been yeah. great to finally meet you in person because yeah. we, we've, we've known each other, other digitally for Oh. Almost a decade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, there you go. All right, let's uh, get on with the show. And as always, thank you for watching. And see you on the road. On the road again. Because this show isn't over yet. Not by a long shot. At least, not until we get to Utah. First, we're going to go into Denver with trailer in tow. Probably not my wisest decision, but I need to pick up a package. And they shows the one Amazon pickup location with a relatively large parking lot. Well, it is with a heavy heart that I depart uh, from this marvelous place. I wish I would have stayed more time uh, because I mean, we didn't get to see the town of Granby and uh, there's even a brewery there. So we will return at some point to this area. I wonder why it wants me to take a ride here. Google lady is crazy. Well, I decided to make a left, which was definitely the wrong decision. Let's see how we can turn around. Apparently it was my fault. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful view feet, of the turn Colorado right the River. East. Take the next right onto US 40 East. Apparently I am the one who took uh, I, US 40 the wrong way. <laughs> so now we're going to be, as I make a right here, we're going to be on the right track once again. We're gonna have to cross those mountains at some point. The same way we came a few days ago, under the rain. Winter Park here seems pretty nice. It is a ski resort. So many towns begging to be explored and discovered. Up the mountains we go. Once again going over Burford Pass. And now, down we go towards A70 and the Mile High City.
Here we join I-70 going back east into the city. And this section of I-70 crossing the Rockies is, in my opinion, one of the best scenic drives in the whole United States. At the very least, it is the most scenic stretch of interstate of them all. That's why I was kind of bummed out when we drove through here under the rain, because we couldn't really appreciate the beauty of these mountains. Denver, a lot more congested and densely populated than I remember, maybe coming here with a trailer wasn't such a good idea. Definitely not a good idea, and I've never done this kind of maneuver with Starship. Let me tell you, there's something to be said about being nimble, and my rig is not as maneuverable as it used to be. And I'm at the wrong place anyway. This is it, this is that large parking lot I saw on satellite view. Mission accomplished. Now let's hurry back to the mountains. After all these days at the resort, I'm ready for some boondocking at a remote location. And I have a spot picked out. This is an incredible drive. By the way, rain is imminent once again. We're approaching the highest point in the entire interstate highway system at 11,158 feet which is equivalent to 3,401 meters above sea level. I am, of course, talking about the Eisenhower Tunnel, originally opened in 1973. It is a little over one and a half miles long, going under the Continental Divide. If you are adventurous, you can take the Hazmat Route, US 6, that goes over Loveland Pass, 832 feet higher. But today we're not in the mood for that kind of adventure. We did it back in 2014. Still not the best weather as far as visibility, but still, it is a stunning drive. That's Delon Reservoir on the left, and I remember this rest area from where we were here back in 2014. Coffee break with a view. Here we're going to take State Route 91 South towards our secluded boom docking spot. Thank you. 
now arriving in Leadville, an old mining town founded in 1877. Not a bad looking town, let me tell you, and lots of fun, I'm sure. Not to mention historic. But this is not our destination today. By the way, I believe one of those mountains ahead of us might be Mount Elbert, the highest peak in the Rockies. So I've been watching and following Tristan of SUV RVing, and he has this website called Adventure Know How, where he lists boondocking spots either found by him or his subscribers, and where we're going today is one of those. This right here is private land, but eventually we'll enter the San Isabel National Forest. That's a National Forest sign right there on the right. Now, let's see if we can find the GPS coordinates. By the way, this place is pretty wild. Yeah, pretty wild road back here in the middle of nowhere. Very remote. It's gotta be it. I almost passed it. It looks like someone has pitched a tent to save that space, so I'll park on the other side, facing out, so it'll be easier to leave tomorrow. There's absolutely no signal here, so my only means of communications is going to be Starlink. And it is Friday, so I'm even doing a live stream. Well, here we are. One thing is certain. This is remote. There's a tent over there. I don't think there's anybody there. But, um, yeah, this is the place that I got from from Tristan of uh, SUVRV and his website, Adventure Know How. <laughs> and this is uh, the, the one site in Colorado that he listed. And there's a very nice creek back here. Let me show you. I'll be honest, I'm, it's a little unsettling being out here all by myself, but check it out. Okay, there we go. Starlink is already doing its thing, so hopefully we'll get a signal at some point. North is kind of that way. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that that hill might uh, affect our reception, but we'll see. Yeah, Friday. Riding in my RV, wherever I want to be, <laughs> there's a free in my RV. Good night, everybody. Well, this was a pretty cool campsite, uh, probably one of the most remote I've ever stayed at. And, uh, and it is the first time I use Adventure Know How to find the campsite. And I have a feeling somewhere down there, there will be Mount Elbert, which is the, the, the tallest peak in the Rockies. I'm gonna see if we can see it now. I really do hope we get some s solar today because I depleted that battery pretty bad last night. It's under 30%. Uh, anyway, now I'm processing tomorrow's uh, video uh, using the, the tr you know, the, the, the Silverado Starship's uh, power plant here. And uh, let's go. Having, actually, having 4x4 gives me the confidence to, to stay at places like this. I mean, this is one of the most remote places I've ever stayed at and the most, like, also off-grid. You know, if it wasn't for Star Starlink, uh, we were totally off-grid. Even the sun wants to come out a little bit.
be nice living here. This being the view from your backyard. Let me park right here for a few minutes. More than a few, actually, because I need to do some repairs. Remember the package I picked up in Denver? Well, it is something I need to replace in Mini Tini 3. Okay, in the original plan, I was gonna stop by Aspen and the Maroon Bells, uh, which is like one of the most iconic uh, views. I wonder how to get there. Uh, but, um, but with the weather the way it is, and it's bound to get worse in the afternoon, I'm just gonna continue, continue. Uh, gonna take Glenwood Canyon, and hopefully tonight we can we can stay at Moab. Uh, I'm gonna see what those signs over there say because one of these mountains is Mount Elbert, which is the highest peak in the in the Rockies, and I wanna figure out which one it is. I think these signs need uh, updating. <laughs> in any case. I don't know which bag it is, uh, Mount Albert, but regardless, it is a beautiful sight. According to the map here, it should be... It's probably that one, actually. If my orientation is correct. Well, while I'm here and the weather is good, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to replace my uh, spare tire holder. I've been holding it with, with zip ties. Uh, because it broke. Look at that. It's only being held by the bottom portion, so... I ordered one on Amazon. It arrived yesterday in Denver, so... Let's replace it. Arkansas headwaters. Once again, going through Leadville. starting to sense a very slight change of scenery again. A landscape, still typical of the Rockies, but a little more arid, a little more reminiscent of the topography of the West. It is no coincidence that we are slowly inching our way towards Utah. Ah, 
Well, it's gonna be once again lunch with the view, and I'm sorry I didn't film the completion of the stew, but this is what it, what it looks like. Actually, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like after it's heated up. Um, batteries at 40%, we're getting some solar. I wanna waste some precious energy and uh, put this in the microwave and mm, I'm starving. I skipped breakfast today. Yeah, while I was boondocking last night, I made a stew. Everything starts to look as you approach a Glenwood Canyon. No more tall trees or anything like that. Everything is more arid, more... Um, yeah, I like it. We're all of a sudden in that desertic... Uh, is that even a word? Desertic climate. Very arid. Finally be arriving in the West like this, it's, it's awesome. This music in the background was indeed inspired by Glenwood Canyon and the first time we crossed the Rockies. Again, back in 2014. This is it, Glenwood Canyon. I'm speechless. Construction of I-70 through this canyon is considered one of the engineering marvels of the interstate highway system. It was completed in 1992, actually the last section of I-70 to be completed. The river next to us, the Colorado. Let's take a break. There's a rest area right here by the Colorado River. Uh, 
All right, let's stretch our legs. That's the mighty Colorado River. I believe it was right here, driving through Glenwood Canyon back in 2014. And the rental Class C, uh, this was one of the determining factors for, for, for sure. That led me to, to want to, to live a life on the road, if you will. And uh, you know, just a month later, we bought Minitini, the original. So, yeah, this is, uh, these landscapes are unique, unique to this area. Hello, folks. All right, I'm gonna make some coffee. And uh, Utah, here we come. We still got like, we still have like four hours to go, I think, or three and a half, something like that. As the rain starts to fall, we are approaching the lovely town of Glenwood Springs. We stopped here for lunch back in 2014 and we'll be back, I promise. Nearby there's also Hanging Lake, a hike that I want to do as soon as we get back to this area. I'm riding, 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 I'm riding in my RV, my RV wherever I Cause I'm free in my RV, yeah. I just have one thing to say. After crossing the Rockies, we've arrived to the West. To the wild, wild West. And the adventures that await us are unprecedented. We are, of course, going to spend a few days in Utah. But then, after a brief layover in Las Vegas, we're going to California, to the Pacific Coast Highway, the Redwoods, the Oregon Coast, Crater Lake. I mean, I think the best is yet to come. But Utah? Utah is going to be awesome. Actually, let me give you a little preview. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding, riding in my